There we're going. All right. Today, we have Michael Huggins here to train us. Uh, the first slide I had up about 10 minutes to the hour was, uh, it talked about letting go of the past and creating the future that you want. You know, if knowledge is power, Renatus has given us a superpower. And, and as an example of this, we've got Michael Huggins. Here was a, a, a guy, you know, changing oil, had student debt, living in somebody's basement, an unfinished basement at that. He didn't have a car. He, had, he loves race car driving, uh, had his eyes set on that. Other things that he wanted to do and experience in life. He didn't want to experience two full-time jobs just to, to, to stay in somebody's basement. So he found the power of the knowledge that comes with Renatus. He changed his life. And you know what? We can too. It's changed my life. I hope it's changed yours. If it hasn't, let's grab a hold of it and change it today. And here's Michael to tell us more about it. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Good morning, Michael. Looks like Michael's having technical trouble this morning. Tell me, um, let me invite some of you guys to come off, off mute for a few moments and tell me what, what has Renata's done in your life? What has that changed? For myself, two years ago in January of 2016, I had 10 more years of a career, I had already worked 30 years there. I figured I had 10 more years and I was okay. That's all I knew, that's all I had plans for, that's all I was prepared for. But in February, my son-in-law came to me and said, Dad, what would you think if I started investing in real estate? And I said, you better take me with you. So I got, uh, I got registered for the Thursday night event. Thanks to, to Dave Evans for introducing us to this. We got there, we met with Raul Campos that first night, and he told what had changed in his life. He pointed out some of the facts that uh, wealthy people across the country and throughout history have always been associated with owning real estate. And I believed that. I had been looking for ways to own real estate for over 30 years. It, uh, here was the answer to all of my questions. And, uh, you know, within nine months of start starting, I was able to retire from my 30 year career and look forward to finally accomplishing the things that I had planned in my life and that the experiences that I wanted to have, things I wanted to do with my wife and with my kids and teach my kids how to, how to improve the, the economic situation in their lives as well. And, and I've been able to do this and it's been awesome. Please tell me what you've been doing. Please tell me what, uh, where you were and where you want to go. Good morning, Ron. Tracy, how are you? I'm doing great. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to share that Renatus really is a personal development company wrapped up in a real estate blanket. Amen. And the, yeah, and the reason why I say that is, is because who I am today is unrecognizable in comparison to who I was when I first joined Renatus in November of 2015. Um, I was a lone wolf, <laughs> right? I just did everything. I'm a powerhouse, right? And I did everything by myself, just whatever it was that I wanted to create in the world, I just did it alone. And what I got present to inside of being part of Renatus is, is first off, real estate investing is a team sport. And actually team building is a team sport. So I am passionate about team building. And this past weekend, I actually was, I'm, I'm just to back up a little bit, I'm part of Landmark's team management and leadership program, which only came about because I joined Renatus. And the person that brought me into this community, Loretta Wetzel, invited me to really look at who I was being as a leader because it's really about being. And so she invited me to take the landmark form. And what I learned from that is, is the person I was being was not being leader. 
actually I was being everything but being leader. And mm -hmm. no wonder that people were not following me. And so just really taking on myself as a human being on this planet and who I'm being for others through um, developing myself through the Renatus education, support from Renatus community members, my leaders, uh, Perrin and Loretta Wetzel, they're phenomenal. Uh, just throw a plug in for them. And then also my, the support that I've gotten from the development that I've received inside of Landmark. Um, two communication courses I would invite anyone to take, and it's so funny, it says, today I will let go of the past that I do not need and create the future that I want. And it's really in language, right? So it's how, what conversations are we having with people such that they're touched, moved, and inspired by what it is that we're creating for ourselves that they say, I want that. And I found the ability to enroll people in what it is that I'm up to, my possibilities, my vision, by taking on two courses, the Access to Power, it's a communications course that Landmark offers, Communication Access to Power, and then taking another course, Communication Power to Create. So this past weekend, as a member of the Team Management and Leadership Program, I've been creating teams and teamwork in any situation that produces powerful results in many areas of life with freedom and ease while having affinity and possibility in all of my conversations and relationships inside of this Team Management and Leadership Program. Many of you know Jeremy Farrell. He took, he's been a, actually he's a product of this training and development. For two years, he was in the team management and leadership program. And he's just a phenomenal human being. He's straight in his communication. He's a team player, he's a community player, and he's taken this technology for accomplishment that we've gotten inside of this program to develop himself in real estate. Uh, and I believe he's in the Atlanta market now. I just met with him the other week. And what we're getting inside of this training and development is really, you know, we get it from different sources. I know that just to also put in Michael Huggins went through John Maxwell's training and development for a leadership and look at what he's been able to bring uh, to our community. So however we get it, I invite everyone to really look at developing ourselves as leaders and then bringing whatever training and development we're getting to this community so we can continue to expand and explode. So that's what I'm getting. And I would not have gotten any of that had I not first said yes to this Renatus opportunity. So that's my share. Tracy, you know, you are really an impressive person. You are a leader in our group. I, I have been had the opportunity to be in your presence several times in the last couple of years and it's always an uplifting and positive experience and and you know if we get nothing else from renatus being around positive and uplifting people is, is such a bonus and thank you tracy for your contribution this morning thank you ron thank you, you bet. all right i love you guys <laughs> Felipe, what have you got to share with us this morning I'm actually going to coattail a little bit on that because I came into Renatus also in November, but not 2015. Uh, November 2016, I came in. I was homeless with my two children. Just like Whoops, looks like we've lost Felina. Well, I'm sorry about that. Um, we, I introduced Michael Huggins a few minutes ago, and it looks like he is has got his technical Snafu taking care of. Michael, good morning. How are you, sir? Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so uh, welcome to Money Monday. I got a uh, training for you guys that I want to make sure you take home. And not only that, but you share it with someone. You make sure that, um, that this is something that I mean, the best way to learn something is to teach it, right? So what, what we're going to cover today, I want you to teach someone, all right? This is the name of the game. All right, so here we go. Sharing screen. Sharing is caring. Sharing. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so here we are talking about the four by four. We're going to... Here we go, full screen. 
what I want to talk about and what you'll be able to take from this is some clarity around your progression, right? Clarity around your progression. Can you guys see my screen right now? Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so here we go. Um, <laughs> four by four. So every one of us has a rate of progress. Right? We're all progressing through this business, but sometimes we end up comparing. Wow, look at this person, look at that person, look at how they did, look at how they did. And so what, are, what we're going to talk about today, and as we move through the week and into next week, we're going to cover the rest of these. But today we're going to talk about the four basics and how they apply to our business and what we're doing. So the four basics are who do you listen to, your teachability index, the training balance scale, and the four levels of learning. So let's do this. Let's talk about basic number one. Who do you listen to? Or for proper English, we would say, to whom do you listen? All right, we've got some grammar hammers out there. <laughs> All right, so basic number one, who do you listen to? <clears throat> in our life and in, in our spheres of influence and our friends and families, every one of them wants to see us do well and succeed and thrive and, and, and not get hurt and not be you know, taking advantage of our friends and families when they're, when they're trying to give us advice and, you know, they'll, they will um, have all the perfect intention, the intention to help, the intention to have you succeed, the intention to prevent you from being hurt. That's their intention but their language comes out in such a way that, that, that makes it small, that, that might belittle it. I'll give you an example. When I told people when I was in high school, hey, I want to be a, a professional race car driver. This is what I want to be. Everyone kept saying, nah, nah, nah. Go get a job in automotive. That's more practical. That's more real. That's more reliable. Well, here's my challenge. Who was I listening to? I was not listening to people who were producing a result that I wanted. I was not listening to people who had what I want. They had jobs and crappy cars. I didn't want a job and a fast car. So but I made a huge, huge mistake in listening to people who did not have what I wanted. So basic number one is only listen to people who have produced a result you want, right? So if I have not produced a result you want, then don't listen to me. But I, if I have, then great. Take notes and focus and let's do it right? But only listen to people who produce the result you want. So think about Bob Snyder, right? He's produced loyalty and leadership like crazy. And I would, that's, I want that kind of loyalty and leadership. And I'm listening to people like Ron Williams, right? Who not only changed their self emotionally, but also physically. This stuff is incredible. So basic number one, write this down. Who do you listen to? And only take advice from people who produce the result you want, right? The people going around telling you, um, you know, how to be healthy, wealthy, and wise, and they're not healthy or wealthy. <laughs> and so then spreading around that kind of stuff means they're also not wise. So just make sure you're only taking advice from people who produce the result you want. The number two is the teachability index. It's made up of two parts. When I was still going through my progression, I guess I still am, but uh, when I first started this path of progress, I was confronted with a lot of ideas that were confronted with a lot of ideas that were against my previous conceptions. And so what slowed me down was not being as coachable and teachable as what was needed. So what does it mean to be teachable and coachable? Well, there's two scales that we're going to look at. The first one is, um, you know, on a scale of one to 10, one being the weakest, 10 being the strongest, on a scale of one to 10, what is your willingness to learn and do things differently? Right? You might be doing the same thing 
but in a different way. And if you're stubborn about it, and you go, well, we're still doing the same thing. What's a big deal? Then you're not, people who say that, they're a one or a zero on the coachability index, right? Not off the scale in the wrong direction. We want to we want to be so coachable and so not attached to our previous way of doing things if we really want to progress. Otherwise, um, if you were so attached to that way and it was such a good way, then then why would you sign up at Renatus or why would you take on training and coaching? See what I mean? So don't be don't be in a contradiction where you're going to pay for training and then not use it. So what is your willingness to learn and do things differently? And then also, what is your willingness to accept change and do things differently? Willingness to learn and willingness to accept change. <clears throat> we keep running into, uh, when I say we, I mean humans. We want change, but we're resistant to change. We want change, but we're resistant to change. And this is something we gotta, we got to stay clear of this resistance to change. We want change. We want to make more money. We want to have more time freedom. We want to have a better communication and relationship with our families and friends. Then we have to accept this change. Change the way we bank, change the way we do our taxes, right? How many people show up in Renatus and they're like, well, I always, you know, I've always had my CPA. 15 years I've had my CPA do this. Like, okay, well, great. So it didn't work. Now we have new ideas for you. You go, well, my CPA didn't say that. And, you know, it's just that kind of mindset is so dangerous. What about the mindset when, you're, when your five-star or your PAC member says, hey, this is, this is how we're going to do it this way. We're going to close sales, work in this system this way, this way. It's not for restriction. It's just there, it's a change you have to make in order to fit into it. You want to have things done effectively, easily, efficiently. You have to be willing to accept change. Now that second bullet point, we go up and down on the index. So throughout the day, throughout the day, up and down, up and down. So one of the major keys you can just ask yourself is this question. Am I being coachable? Am I being teachable? How teachable am I? How teachable am I being in this moment? Right? Someone gets on a call. Someone shows up to a workshop. Uh, maybe, you know, you're sitting with a homeowner or you're talking to a lender, whatever it is. You ask yourself constantly, how teachable am I being? How coachable am I being? <clears throat> the other way to display your teachability and your coachability is to give something up. So do you guys remember what I gave up? You guys remember? I gave up two major things. TV, video games. Oh, man, that was hard. But when I look back, <laughs> it was so worth it. So worth it. I don't have to play a game to feel good. I just feel good right? So I gave up crutches. I gave up uh, a bad attitude. I gave up cynicism, right? I gave up a lot of things. So what are, you, what are you willing to give up in order to make a change, in order to be teachable and take on something new, okay? Everyone's different, but it's a part to, to process and to think about. Also, we are constantly amazed at how people are so resistant to spend another couple dollars on some ads or marketing or, or an LLC or something like that. So also, how much are you willing to invest of your money and time in your business? Some people say 20,000, isn't that enough? 20,000, isn't that enough? It's, it's not enough. That's how, that's, you got the training, but now you gotta build a business. Start an LLC, get a business bank account, right? So you start marketing, start advertising, you got your business cards, that's 10 bucks right there for some business cards. Okay, that's a cost. There's more costs involved than just your 20 grand, right? So, so don't, don't be one of those people that says 20 grand, that's enough. Well, in, in relation to what? How big do you want to make this thing? How many properties do you want? How much cash flow do you want? Right? Because then we've got to go buy houses. We've got to pay property managers. And some people go, well, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend money. I just want to make money. You got to feed the business. So what is your willingness to invest time and money into your business? Here's a phrase that if you find it in your core, you will be successful. No matter what you want to be, actor, uh, inventor, um, you know, obviously real estate investor, business owner, whatever you want to be. If your attitude is, I'll do whatever it takes to learn this, you'll be successful. 
Also, I'm going to suggest a language change in your teachability index. If you want to stay at a 10 and stay as teachable and coachable as possible, you have to say things like, I'm getting it. As soon as you say, I got it, I got it. Close the book. Stop talking. I got it. That was your attitude. Well, how coachable are you on a scale of one to ten? Are you very coachable? Not so coachable? Zero coachable. When you say I got it, you have literally turned off your coachability brain. I got it. Right? Some people will say, say no more. Same kind of thing. Why would you tell that person to say no more? Unless you're done learning, which means your coachability and teachability went down. So, um, and I love it because in our Denver team right now, we talked a lot about this this last six, seven weeks. I'm getting it versus I got it. And at first, you know, people would, <laughs> wouldn't even realize they said it. Oh, okay, I got it. And then someone else in the class would be like, you're getting it. And be like, oh yeah, thank you. I'm getting it. But now we are just in this habit. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Is there anything else to get? So make sure you're using that powerful language. Take a screenshot of this. Screenshot. Okay. If at first you don't succeed, for you phoners, this is what it says. If at first you don't succeed, try doing what your coach told you to do the first time. <laughs> right? We're here to shorten up people's learning curve, shorten up their time between when they join and when they make money. Do you want to make money or do you want to be right? Do you want to make money or do you want to be comfortable? Right? So you're here to make money. So just do what you were told the first time. All right, number three, the training balance scale. The training balance scale. So what this is made up of is two parts. And if we don't engage in both parts, we will miss it. So the first part. First part. What is going on here? There we go. On the first part of the scale is what's going on in our minds, how we think, how we feel, the emotional side, the vibration side, the energy side of what we want to create in this world. Okay, there's a lot to it. We gotta, we gotta stick with that side of it. Now the other side is the what to do or the how, the steps, the plan, the techniques, okay? And so, Think about this, if you just stayed in the thought process and you just stayed in your goal process, would you ever get anything? No. And if you just stayed in the how and you just kept taking steps and taking steps and taking steps, but you didn't know why you were doing it or where you were going and you didn't have a desire backing it to energize your steps, would you get what you wanted? No, so we gotta have both. It's a training balance scale, okay? So, as you're learning the information in Renatus, whether it's your 10-step training, right, the mash, the gas, the, the fast start guide, or you're in your real estate, as you learn the information, do both. Take a step, take a step, take a step. Take, the, take, a, take a lesson, then take an action. Take a lesson, then take an action. Spend equal time in action and thinking. In fact, because we're human beings and because everything has to happen in our mind first, we're going to spend 99% of the time on thoughts. But if we stay there, we don't take action, obviously we won't get anything. Okay. So this, if you really want to raise, right, you, you want to double your income, triple your income, quintuple your income. I went back and looked. I have 37 X my income, 37 multiplied. And it's because this last bullet point down here, I'm working on the thinking process. I'm working on the thinking process. So I would encourage you guys to make sure that this is part of your practice, part of your, um, your new way of being, your new mode, working on the thinking process. Yes, if you keep working with your hands and you keep doing that stuff, great, but you'll only get so far with it. The thinking is where you get so many more advantages. So sometimes, um, you know, some of your poor friends or your not so um, enlightened friends might be thinking that you're lazy. All you do is sit around all day and you just, you know, you don't, 
You don't pick up a shovel. You don't, you know, you're not, all you do is just sit. Well, poor people are always confused. We're not just sitting, we're thinking, we're, we're planning, we're, we're, we're getting a, the goals lined up. We're emotionally charging the action. So, neglect process. You want to double your income? Double the time you're thinking. <laughs> and we, I could do a, we could do a whole weeks long webinars on thinking, but I'll let you go and figure that out. Everyone's a little bit different, but just know that this is, this is, this is where the magic is. This is where all the money is, right? Too many people are wrapped up in trying to get a job and stand in line and do some labor. And here we are in the information age where the most valuable thing is thinking. So make sure that's a part of your awareness. All right, the fourth basic is the four levels of learning. <clears throat> this is important to understand because, again, when we start to compare and contrast and look at this person and what they've done and now look at me and I'm no good and blah, blah, blah. It's, um, it's discouraging. So, take your mind off of discouraging things like that. Let's understand the four levels of learning. So the first level is called unconscious incompetence. So because someone's producing a result, that means they're, they've, they've left level one, which is unconscious incompetence. Another way of saying that is you don't know what you don't know. That's a crazy place to be. Other people might call it double darkness, right? You just don't know what you don't know. But now, in level two of learning, it's called conscious incompetence. And now you know what you don't know. So you've taken on an idea and now you realize, oh, I don't know what that is. All right, we could do it with, uh, let's talk about tying our shoes, right? So on level one, unconscious incompetence. You didn't even know that tying shoes was a thing, okay? Then one day you see someone tie shoes. When you see them tie the shoes, then you are now consciously incompetent. Before that, you were unconsciously incompetent. But now you know that you don't know how to tie shoes. So, the level three is where you take a lesson. You watch someone, they give instruction, you go for it. You now know it, but you still have to consciously apply the info. You still have to concentrate while you're taking those steps. That's level three learning. So a lot of you folks on the line are in level three learning, right? You've taken the classes, you've taken the trainings, you've, you've worked on yourself, you've built the goals, you're working on the thinking. And it's, a, it's mental effort, conscious competence. You have to still concentrate while you're applying it. But the great news is you will, if you stick with it, end up on level four of learning, which is unconscious competence. You know it automatically, manifesting your desires at record speed. Things just happen without thinking about it. How, I mean, and now that's where you're at with tying your shoes. You don't even think, it doesn't even take a, a thread of conscious effort to tie your shoes anymore. That's unconscious competence. So, I'm going to make the parallel that building a business and tying your shoes are very similar. Now, some of you go, ah, oh, it's way harder, it's way harder. Bull crap. You thought the same thing about tying your shoes was way hard, way hard. But now people who have built businesses, they go back and think, ah, oh, so easy. Running my business and thriving and doing what I want with my business, so easy. I don't even think about it anymore. So just know that you're, you're going to get to that point if you stick with it. You will become unconsciously competent on the compensation plan or the earnings plan. You'll become unconsciously competent on how to, how to sell Renatus, uh, how to do a presentation, on how to buy a property, on how to fill out a contract. If you're struggling right now, that just means you're on level two or level three of learning. That's it. So the reason why we bring this stuff up is because we want to make sure that you maintain your progress and that you pick up speed as you go. Right? If you just think that level two is where it's at or level three is where it's at, then you might not put in that kind of effort to get to level four. So we want to make sure you know level four learning is where you will end up, where things just happen automatically. Right? Think about texting, right? 
there was a point in time when nobody had cell phones. Then when we had cell phones, then we had to, now there's this thing called texting, right? And we got you got to push the two button a bunch of times to get to a C, and then you got to push the three button a bunch of times to get to the next, thing, right? So we had to learn about texting, and then all of a sudden, it, we got the new keyboards. And now this, now do you even think about texting? Do you think where's the Q? Do you think where's the space bar? No. So with many many things in your life, you have covered. You've, you've stair-stepped your way out of ignorance or out of unconscious incompetence into unconscious competence where it's happening automatically. This is going to happen for you and your business. This is going to happen for your, um, your relationships, for your, for your well-being, for your health, things like that. If you really focus on it, you understand there are four levels to learning. You can stay motivated. You can stick through it and get to the result that you're after. All right, so that was our four basics. That's Money Monday for you. We're going to wrap up this call. We have, a, uh, we have our pack call. We got to jump on here in just a minute. And I um, just want to remind you guys, stay focused on the leaders retreat. You really want to hit that? We want you there. Um, Bob Snyder reserved 150 rooms and about a hundred have been registered or claimed and paid for. So there's 50 left. Now what's cool is those rooms are for double occupants. So that means you, maybe you're going to split something with another IMA or, or, you know, bring your spouse or something. But the point is if you stay focused on that, that's what you'll get. Okay. It's the next, it's the next thing you want to be involved in. It's the next, um, it's the next evolution in your awareness of how to grow a dynamic, thriving, fun business. Okay, so I hope to see you guys at the Leaders Retreat. Stay focused for basics. You're going through it right now. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, folks. Thanks for being here Monday. Stay focused. Talk to you soon.